going to talk about an exciting topic, and that is technology. And um, technology of old is not the technology of new. And what I want to do is just share some nuggets of insights that I've had over the years um, and kind of talk about some examples. And as Ken shared, I have been um, CIO over five different industries. I've been fortunate to do so. Um, and I love the opportunity to contribute and give back to the community. So um, thank you. If any of you are in harm's way in uh, Louisiana up that stream, please be careful. Um, our thoughts are with you. So I'm going to start with a story and I'm going to go way, way back 2016, uh, the time of a 48 month lease. And it feels like a long time because 2020 feels like it's a decade in itself. But in 2016, we had a presidential election. Those of you might remember that. And again, it feels like a long time ago. And during the presidential, presidential election, we actually um, experienced here in Illinois uh, a hack. And this is true information. And I always try to position technology as apolitical, whether you're red, blue, pink, purple, whatever your affiliation is, Technology is technology. And this is actually corroborated by the FBI, Homeland Security, and a bipartisan committee um, that we were hacked during the election. Illinois was one of the states that actually got it pretty bad. And so the reason I'm bringing this up is because cybersecurity clearly is top of mind. So what happened in 2016 here in Illinois was that a couple of things um, occurred. Um, the uh, Russians, and it's proven because we have data showing it came from St. Petersburg, um, was able to hack um, some of the voter registration drives and get some of the information. Um, another thing that was done was uh, social reengineering. And when I say that is um, individuals went online and they sent information that was erroneous. Some of the information sent out was, for example, uh, the polls are closed, um, it is closed. And people listen to it and say, well, the polls will be closed. Another one that went out was, hey, your, your candidate won. No need for you to show up. You don't need to vote. Tonight we'll celebrate. And a lot of people sat at home and made the assumption. And so, again, this is not about what affiliation you are, but this is how um, our state was manipulated. And also, another thing that became more prevalent during this time was ransomware. And Ransomware, for those of you who know already, and those of you who may have a, 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 on the fringe of what it is, essentially bad actors get into your system, they essentially hijack your own data, and they essentially, at a certain point, tell you they lock it up, they encrypt it, and then you have to pay a fee for you to go ahead and get your own data. Um, oftentimes, they're in your system for weeks or months on end until they decide to strike. They're in your network, they're in your system, pretty much trolling, and at a certain point, they have all the information they need and they do so. Um, early on, they focused on um, low protected areas, such as schools, our kids' data, which is kind of alarming, but also municipalities and counties, knowing that the cybersecurity in those areas are relatively weak. Ransomware in 2016 grew up, and in 2018, 2019, and now 2020, it's becoming more prevalent in corporate America. And so it's very important that, of course, that we protect our data, but we also improve our hygiene. And I'll talk to that in a second. Another reason why this is extremely important is about the brand. And I know many of you on the call, myself included, um, the value of your brand is extremely important. You have to ensure that you protect the brand, but also that those that rely on you know that you are protecting their brand the best they can. Um, in 2016 or so, Target was a target, um, pun intended, of a hack. And the hack was not directly on the Target systems. Um, after the whole, essentially, review, they hacked into the HVAC unit, the company that provides heating and cooling for one of the Target locations. They used those credentials to get into Target, and therefore they got into Target. So again, the importance is not just protect your space, but make sure that the vendor community, those that support you, are also protecting their space as well. And many of you probably have phenomenal tech colleagues, colleagues of mine, and they probably know all this and understand this. My goal here is just to kind of double down on some of the things they might share with you because it's real, it's prevalent, and it's happening today. So today in the state of Illinois, four years later, um, it's, it's different. And a great CISO, CISO, 
will never go on stage and say how awesome they are. Because the minute you say that, someone is going to try to test it. And that's what you don't want. But I can say the state of Illinois is in a far better place. We used to have three people statewide that were responsible for cybersecurity. Today, we have a 50-man um, SOC, Security Operations Center. But we also reach out, we partner with Homeland Security, we partner with the FBI, and we partner with our National Guard. Um, General Neely and I are peers on the cabinet for um, Governor Pritzker, and so I reach out to the National Guard for their cybersecurity protocols, because they're phenomenal at it. And I call them my cyber cavalry, if you will. So talking about security, I'm gonna circle back to this at the end, but for the next roughly eight to nine minutes, I'm gonna share other things that will kind of bring the thread back to, to you. The one that I wanna share are the guiding principles that have served me well um, in my years at Toyota. And mind you, when I started at Toyota, I started in repossessions here in Chicago. My job was to knock on doors, pray for payment, sometimes hoping they didn't answer the door. So I totally understood the world of repossessions. Y2K got me into tech, which was the plan, and I haven't looked back. So the first thing that um, a guiding principle for me that I wanna share with you that has served me well is um, what I call five E's. The first one is enable. Our job as technologists is to enable the business. If we're not enabling the business, then clearly there is a challenge and we need to fix that. And enablement also means that sometimes our cybersecurity can't be too rigorous. There has to be some assumed risk. So for example, if we block every website um, or we block all these things and you can't do your job, that is a challenge. So the best CISOs that I've worked with know that balance and work with the chief risk officer to start talking about risk profiles and what can be mitigated. The second E that always served me well is engagement, reaching out. The technologists of old where we sit in a dark room and we're not talking to anyone and you throw us an idea and we respond within a month, maybe in some cases a year, that's gone. Waterfall tech, um, methodologies of build it, send it, get it back, is gone. Agile is essentially where we're at today and different forms of agile. But again, agile means that I need the best of the business to partner with me throughout each part of the process. So it's more of a relationship. It's symbiotic. The third E that's always served me well is explore. Exploration. Our role in technology is to work with our business colleagues and see what's next on the horizon. I worked at Blockbuster Video in high school. You guys remember Blockbuster Video. It was actually a pretty lucrative company. Um, they owned, the, the, I believe, AutoNation or one of the uh, auto groups. Uh, but they also owned the uh, well, Miami Dolphins. So I worked there, and if you know the story of Blockbuster and its demise, they had an opportunity to buy Netflix, and they passed. They felt that this whole idea of at home won't work. And a few years later, Netflix had an opportunity to buy Net uh, Blockbuster, and they passed on it. Blockbuster's business model was, at the end of the day, people enjoyed coming into Blockbuster, communicating with people in their community, they're actually thinking about expanding to become Blockbuster Cafe. There's a, there's a business case on this one if you want to read up on it. Fascinating. But the technology disrupted that. So the one thing I'll say is our job is to explore what's next and understand what is on that horizon and find new business models. And your technology colleagues are great partners for that. The fourth E is evangelize. Our job in technology is to evangelize value. If we're not evangelizing value, if we're not moving things forward, then what's the point of having a technology group? And every great technologist understands that they have to be able to take the technology and speak in a way that's business. So for me, my board of directors are no longer my friends in Nagoya or my friends at Zurich when I worked at Farmers. Now my board of directors is a general assembly for the state of Illinois. 178 senators and representatives who have whole different points of view. My job is to articulate in a way that they would understand it and explain to them the value that we're bringing. The fifth E for me is eliminate waste. There's a Japanese term called MUDA, M-U-D-A. Technology has a great opportunity to remove waste in the system. If there are five steps, why can't we do it in three? That way we reduce cost, but also ease of use for our internal customers and our external customers. So those five E's with guiding principles have served me well, enable, engage, explore, evangelize, and eliminate waste. And with all that being said, I wanna make sure I'm good on time, I believe I am. There are five financial priorities 
that are always strong and I know we have to get going. First is architecture. It's not architecture of building a home, but it's technology architecture. Having a very strong understanding of your technology footprint. So when you want to do a merge and acquisition, you understand how easy or hard it is to integrate the technology or understanding what's next. Is there deprecating technology we shouldn't use anymore? For example, Blackberries? Or is there new technologies that we should really be thinking about, such as blockchain? When the state went to um, selling marijuana legally, there was a discussion about using blockchain to be the back end for the distribution. And we decided not to at the time because we were not quite sure where it was going, but we're still tinkering with that. The second one is service management. Our ability as an internal IT shop to service your needs is extremely important as you service the needs of our customer, whoever that is, whether it is a homeowner, a car owner, or whatever that is. So our ability to provide better service management to you is critical. The third one is a PMO, having a very strong program management office that has the discipline to get the projects through, but more importantly, the discipline to say these projects need to die. These are not adding value or as a pet project of an executive, this needs to go. We only have so much finite resources. Here are our top three, knock those out, let's move on to the next three. A very strong PMO will do wonders for any organization, and I assume many of you have a good one. The fourth one is data analytics. Data analytics is paramount now. Now, I would say that five, 10 years ago, it was like that thing that we had to deal with when we we're merging systems, but today data analytics is paramount. If we want to personalize the experience to our customers, we have to know the customer. We have to know the data and analyze the customer's data best. To me, data analytics is no different than what kerosene and gasoline was back in the day of Rockefeller. Kerosene was a product, gasoline was a byproduct. We unfortunately put those in lakes and rivers, gasoline was important. Then the combustible engine came in, gasoline became essentially what we really needed and kerosene became a secondary. That's what data has become. When I worked for Express Scripts, we had data on 120 million Americans, prescriptions on 120 million. That's more than a third of all Americans we had data on. Cigna acquired Express Scripts, and one of the reasons Dave Cordani said he did it, he wanted data. He needed more information so he could better serve the healthcare needs of Americans. And with all that being said, the fifth and final foundational topic is information security, what I started with. Everything I talked about in the last 10, 15 minutes or so means nothing if we don't have the right security protocols. So when your CISO approaches you and says, I need to make this investment or this is at risk, please, please, I implore you, please listen to he or she because most likely she is speaking or he is speaking from something that's really necessary. You must protect your brand because there are bad actors who are not just out to get information, they're also using it to go against you and they also can hurt and erode your brand value. So those are kind of my thoughts and my insights, starting with security, ending with security, and everything in between. And I condense that as fast as I can within a 15 minute period. 